Welcome, welcome everyone to the HWBOT World Series 2016 Asia. This is the second match between Extreme Addict and Dan Cop. Let's tune in directly. I'm myself, Truthman from OCTV. This is Dr. Wiz, number one overclocker in South Africa that will be commenting with me this match between the top two overclocker in the world. Let's tune in to the judge for the drawing. Okay, so let's draw the first one. Fire Strike Fix X 4 GHz. Interesting. That copy is fine. Vito from Extreme Addict. Vantage CPU. Vantage Physics. Pull out. Okay, so the benchmark is going to be 3D Mark Vantage CPU score. That was a hard game for them to decide on which is the benchmark they want to do. So each of the overclockers have one veto. Uh, Dan Cobb didn't want so to we veto the first one. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Good luck. Yeah, I thought that uh, benchmark draw was quite interesting. Uh, seeing uh, Dan Cop agreeing on the, the 4 gigahertz uh, fire strike was quite a nice move. I was surprised to see uh, Extreme Addict veto that one though. Well, the, that's the thing. So each of the overclocker have one veto. So <coughs> when the first draw of the benchmark is out, they can say, no, I don't want this benchmark. And they use their veto. That's it. Right, yeah. so th that's why I think Danka was hesitating to do I veto this one and then XA can veto my next benchmark. And I think it was like, I can push it, I can push XA to veto that specific benchmark. Yeah, yeah, no, correct. There's definitely a bit of a strategy involved in, in the veto scenarios, rather the devil you know than the devil you don't. Uh, there are some scary benchmarks in the, the pool that can be drawn, and sometimes you just don't want to be stuck with a reference clock or something crazy. Well, what what uh, would be your veto? Oh, maybe uh, you don't want to tell before the uh, before the SW World World Championship because you already got your seat for the the grand final in December. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, so I'm already qualified to to head off to Germany in December for the finals. Um, but you know, the, the, it's really luck of the draw. If you get your benchmark coming out first and your opponent vetoes it, you need to be really good at every every option there is. So here we go, that's going to be 3 Mark Vantage CPU test. So just a uh, CPU test will be uh, counting toward the score here for the ranking at the HWBOT World Series Asia. We are here at the Computex in Taipei, Taiwan. The two overclockers are representing the top two best overclocker in the world. Dan Cobb is currently number one in the HWBOT ranking and Extreme Addict is currently number two. And this is the second time this week that they are facing each other. There was actually a face-off three days ago uh, with them and Dan Cop ended up being victorious of, the, of that one. Uh, Dan Cop is using the uh, Asus X99 Rampage 5 X, uh, Edition 10 uh, motherboard from Asus, uh, while uh, uh, Extreme Addict is using the X99 SoC Champion from Gigabyte. Yeah, that's right. The, uh, the, the new Rampage 5 Edition 10 was launched uh, about four days ago. It's a refresh of the old Rampage 5 that's been around for about a year now. And the SOC Champion is the same revision um, with a new BIOS uh, that was released for the Broadwell E chipset. I've had an opportunity to test the uh, Rampage 5 Edition 10. And uh, let me say, it, it's, it really performs quite well. Even though it's a completely new uh, a new board, uh, you can still have all the settings that you wanted to uh, to access for it. So here we go. Dan Cup is already in the OS. He's uh, selecting just the test he needs to do for this special run here. They have 30 minutes to do the best score in C in uh, Vantage CPU, so 3 mark Vantage CPU score, and it will be going straight into the benchmark, just getting the right temperature on the CPU. So or you can see Extreme Addict is super concentrated now, is setting different timings in the BIOS. These 
He's do so, so usually when we do that, so the first five minutes is called the cooldown period. So the cooldown period is when the overclickers cool down the CPU because they have to start each of the one versus one uh, above uh, a certain temperature. So they have to be in positive temperature before the match can start. And now they are uh, dialing in the settings, dropping the temperature. Um, what we call is usually in the first 10 minutes you do a placeholder score. This is a default running score that you just want to make sure that everything is working completely, that you don't have any tweak that actually uh, came in conflict with the, with the benchmark. Um, we have now Dan Cop doing that first score. He already overclocked a little bit the system, uh, but we will see the, all the planes cr not crashing in, uh, in, in it. I wish that uh, the benchmark could actually change a little bit if uh, the, if you have a higher score, the, the plane can crash or stuff like this. Yeah, yeah, it gets get very repetitive after running this benchmark a couple of times. What would be your favorite bench, uh, uh, like favorite strategy for 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 this? Do you, do you like a specific part of this CPU test? For for Vantage, I I really dislike all of it. Uh, <laughs> it it's it's a bit of a kind of cumbersome test and. Uh, it's, it's it's old, so it's not very pretty either. But that's the thing, and here it's all based on CPU calculation, so the workload is not uh, pretty, it's not a graphic benchmark, it's just a graphic representation of the load being uh, pushed to the system. Uh, but, you know, yeah, it's, it's an old benchmark, it's not very uh, cute to look at, but at least there's some stuff moving on the screen. And But this is not 140 FPS. Yeah, correct. I'm, I'm not sure if Vantage actually scales up to the uh, the, the 10 cores, 20 threads at Dan the Cop, new... 55, 908. So we've got a score from Dan Cop at... Uh... Couldn't see that score there. 59k, 59.9. Yeah. That is a decent score for for starting. That is actually a nice a nice score to start with. He is already at five gigahertz on this Broadwell eCPU, the Core i7 6950X. The CPU was actually launched just last Tuesday, uh, just a few days ago. Uh, the CPU were not officially uh, available in the public. You can now get one of them, and you can get one on our giveaway on our uh, giveaway on overclocking-tv.com for slash raffle. There is one of the CPU to win in uh in there the so damn cops busy running again he just changed the uh the one setting up a little bit let's see if there's any base so the guys are running a 32 gig set of memory uh which is also puts quite a little bit of stress on the imc be interesting to see if the vantage is scaling at all when they they tweak those settings up So here we go, we have the 3 Mark Vantage uh, CPU benchmark right here, uh, benching, uh, be being benched by the overclocker. You can see that um, it's it's all like it, the, the, the reason is this is just a representation of the workload being pushed to the system. We have XA now into Windows. Yeah, I'm surprised to see that XA is still busy installing the software that's required in order to clock up the processor. Uh, I would have thought that he would have prepared. 23. 78,000. This is a huge gap, huge increase in score for uh, for for this benchmark. He's pushing the CPU core voltage at 1.6 volt and the base clock frequency as 101. So we've got Extreme Addict now trying to clock the CPU up to 5.1. Um, hopefully, we will get some runs out of him pretty soon. 5.1 and 35 megahertz for Extreme Addict. This is uh, this is tough because it doesn't have a placeholder yet, and we are already eight minutes into that game. Uh, let's see if he can get at least that first run, and that would be a strong first run for uh, Extreme Addict if everything goes fine. The guys here are so close to the edge, they're so close to the edge of stability that everything can happen. They can blue screen, the system can just shut down, or they can crash, and they have to uh, make sure that they can restart the system correctly uh, once they will be uh, uh, crashing the system to make sure that they don't destroy anything. Uh, 
So here we go, the two overclocker, the top two overclocker in the world, Dan Cobb versus Extreme Addict here. We are nine minutes into that game and are both now benching. Only Dan Cobb have a score of 78k point right now. Extreme Addict is uh, trying to finish his first run of this game. We'll see if he managed to uh, get a decent score for that. There's one, uh, one the second part of the, the, the small crashing planes. These tests are so stressful on the CPU. They are actually extremely stressful on the CPU. Uh, that's an increase of 700 points right there from Dankop. Dankop's sitting 52 on the uh, multiplier for the CPU. Extra Medic, 80,410. Wow. wow, that's a huge first core. That that's that extreme. So he doesn't even do uh, the placeholder. He goes that's straight to what he can do as maximum. And both of the calculator are about a negative 100 C now. So here we are. Uh, we have extreme addict benching at 5,260 uh, 5, megahertz for the CPU. This will be a huge score. So Dan Cup have to catch up with that 80k point from extreme addict. So extreme addict submitted one score, 80k. Um, Dan Cup had three score to arrive to 78k. This is wow. This is this is crazy to start that high. Let's let's hope that they can still you know uh, improve a little bit. There's two strategy here. Go full out straight from the beginning and you can run into big issues you cannot you will maybe not be able to um, no dial in and, uh, yeah, yeah. and recover or you can just go step by step yeah there's definitely two strategies being used here from uh, extreme addict and dankop personally i feel that the dankop method is the safer route to take purely because if you run into any major issues to start off with your your brain sort of needs time to recover from problem solving dankop 81219 that's a good comeback from Dan Cop. And Dan Cop is now taking back the lead against Extrematic. This is truly really the top two overclocker in the world facing each other. We have the number one overclocker in the world, Dan Cop, now taking the lead against the number two overclocker in the world, Extreme Addict. The two overclockers are head to head. Let's see the new score from Extreme Addict. Extreme Addict, 81,724. And. Uh, 81,700. That's uh, a nice comeback from Extreme Addict there. He's now edged in front of uh, Dan Cop again. So we're going to see it all. Oh, and we got a blue screen from Dan Cop. The first blue screen of this second semi final here at the HWBot World Series. Dan Cop currently number one overclocker in the world, but he just lost the lead against Extreme Addict. This is a tight battle by the guys. Can't wait to see what... Uh, oh, blue screen from Extreme Addict as well. We got two blue screen now. Like each of the overclocker got their blue screen. They should get like a like a coffee or every time they do a blue screen on the on the competition. Uh, we should definitely take some points and, uh, and award the blue screen of the match uh, award after the game. <laughs> like the most valuable blue screen. So we are here, we have 12 minutes into this match, there's 18 minutes left for them to get out the best score. And you know, that, that, that's, diff that's super tough here because we have two overclockers benching two different motherboard at the very highest level that they, uh, of these games. These guys are the best overclocker in the world, you know, it, it's not every day you can see them face to face. And this week was extremely impressive because you could have seen them twice, once two days ago and now again. Yeah, so you'll notice that both overclockers take the strategy of booting up with safe settings and then they'll, they'll do a test run and then slowly edge up step by step, get, increasing their scores. So the interesting strategy is that the both Dankop and Extreme Addict are using different base clocks and uh, there could be something to read into that. So uh, Dankop is using the 100 base clock while uh, Extreme Addict is using the 125. Extreme Addict is sticking to the same uh, strategy he used. Uh, yesterday to win the face of 125 all the way and trying to reach higher frequency on the memory for that. Yeah, yeah that's correct. Yeah, they're just upping the base clock step by step and uh, each one would increase the memory and the, the core frequency. So we've got both uh, overclockers now running again. So 
the DreamWorks uh, Vantage benchmark, the CPU benchmark is just made out of planes, uh, like planes, like a like a race from a famous energy drink. I will be trying to reach out. Oh, we have a freeze from Extreme Addict. Let's wait for the blue screen. Can we get a blue screen? Will we get a blue screen? So the bench blue or oh, alpha blue screen. Oh, you, ju <laughs> you don't get it completely. It's just alpha. Yeah, I think Extreme Addict caught that one before it came through our single. <laughs> Say, no, no, I don't want to hear Truthman yelling in the microphone again, so I will just visit the system. 16 minutes. Here we are, half of the game. 16 minutes left for the overclockers to put out the best score they can. Tankup is benching again, trying to uh, get these 600 points that he is missing for his, uh, for his system. Seven hundred. So it's very interesting to watch these guys benchmark. If you have a look at the, the frame counter and the, the bottom of the screen, you can always get a, a good indication if their score is going to improve or not before you can get the final score. As a as an overclocker, that's I find myself doing that while watching the the guys overclock. It's a bad habit. So here we go, Extreme Addict is in the system at a little bit above 5.2 GHz, while Dancup is benching on 3 Mark Vantage CPU. So let's see, the score will be soon for Dancup. Oh, that was not a better score than the previous one. 80k. Let's see if we can get in the next 15 minutes, if we can go back into the game and kick out Extreme Addict from the lead. This is currently number one overclocker in the world versus number two. Uh, we are seeing Extreme Addict is back into the benchmark. That's going to be, uh, if this one is successful, that's going to be the fourth run successful for him. And the second, uh, the third time he will be improving his score. Yeah, so... That score ended on 30, uh, 38,000. So that, that's an improvement over Dan Cop's previous run. So the overclockers can see some of the uh, of the information directly on the system uh, below the below the benchmark. Actually, just be behind the scoreboard, you can see some of the uh, operations. At certain point in the benchmark, you know if you have more operation or not. This is a good way to know if your score would be better than the previous one. And this is exactly what extreme overclockers are reaching out, and you just uh, point out that. Extreme Magic, 82,398. That's that's a great improvement from his previous uh, previous run. I think the pressure is now starting to build into the final final ten minutes of this match. He's trying to go at almost 5.3 gigahertz. Uh, Extrematic is trying to reach 5.3 gigahertz. Uh, he's using the strap 125. Uh, this strap allow him to go higher in memory frequency. Uh, of course, the memory is important here today to make sure that you can get most of the performances. Oh, uh, and that crashed straight up. Extrematic crashed straight away, and we got a blue screen. Dancup is uh, concentrated on his system. The two systems are restarting now. They have to make sure that uh, everything will be fine for the next uh, for the next benchmark run, right? Yeah. So the complications with Broadwell E is that they, you, to get the maximum out of them, you really have to run them close to the cold bug. So you'll see them really cooling the processor down, but then when they crash, they need to really heat the process up again in order to reboot the system. Um, so there's a lot of backwards and forwards. It's, it's quite a tough system to benchmark. But this is although completely new, so there's a lot of tweak and tips that uh, we don't know yet, so that we have to find out in the next few weeks or few months for the overclockers that uh, will be uh, having them at home. Uh, this CPU is the latest Intel CPU, the Intel Core i7-6950X. This is the most powerful you can find on the market, and uh, these overclockers are pushing it to the edge to the maximum. So extreme addict at almost 5.3. Yeah, so it was 
They are using liquid nitrogen. The liquid nitrogen is a negative 200 degree uh, Celsius gas, actually a fluid that allows the overclockers to cool down the CPU as much as they can. Right, so we got Dan Kopp back in the operating system. He's trying a slightly lower base clock with a slightly higher cache ratio. Hopefully that will give him the boost he's needing. XA crashed, XA crashed, and blue screen! The blue team is having the blue screen. It was torching the pot straight away. Uh, that's the thing, if the system crashed, they have to actually um, eat up the, the container to, to make it restart. Uh, this happened because it's too cold. Um, this is something you usually run into for the Broadway that you test all uh, along this year, this week. Yeah, that's that's hundred percent correct. The the Broadwell E needs to to be at around minus ninety five degrees in order to post and to boot. Uh, but when you're running, you need to really be around minus hundred and ten. So if you're crashing at around hundred and ten, you've got to quickly get back to minus ninety five in order to restart the system. Is it all the same with all the CPUs, or each of the CPUs have a different ratio? Yeah, unfortunately, all of the CPUs have a different sweet spot, and you really got to try and find it to to dial it in. It's it's quite a challenge. Dan Cop torching the pot, that means he's uh, just crashed crash. the benchmark. That's that's the thing, you know you know exactly when uh, when you know they go torch the pot, that means like something froze and they have to restart. So you know they have to reach for that special temperature to make it work completely. Yeah, the other thing you gotta remember is in a live competition sometimes you your hand gets a little bit shaky and you get a little bit overexcited and uh, it's very easy to over pour and to, to cool the CPU down too much too quickly. We've got Extreme Attic back in the system, he's going to try again. Looks like he's trying to dial into that uh, 5.27 uh, frequency. Just adjusting some of the, the ring and the V core voltages and uh, we should see him running again shortly. Alright, so we're going to see Extreme Addict giving it one more try. Alright, so we've got Dan Cop posting again and Extreme Addict is currently running. In a few, in about 10 seconds, we should be able to see if this will be an improvement or not. We have got eight minutes and 30 seconds remaining in this stage at the moment we have got extreme addict with uh, 82,398 points and dan cop with 81,219 the beauty of this one on one is that it uh, can change in the matter of minutes so stay tuned it can even change in a matter of seconds actually well yeah each each test takes about uh, 45 seconds to to complete so I can change in a matter of about 45 seconds. <laughs> that fast. So the two overclockers are still in the system. Extreme Addict is uh, having a 82.5k score again. So he's improving his actual score. The new best score from uh, Extreme Addict on that level. Extreme Addict, 82,589. Dan Cop is up and running again and uh, almost through the first CPU test. And crash from Dan Cop. Let's see for the blue screen. Can we get the blue screen? I don't think we'll get a blue screen. I think it's a reset button too quickly. Wait for it. And no blue screen. Let's get a blue screen from Xtreme Addict. Can we get it? Can we get it? Can we get it? Yeah, no. 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 Ah. I, th I think the overclockers are onto your, your method Wait here. And they're hitting Wait the reset button. <laughs> <laughs> so.
So two of the over the two overclickers here are the top two overclocker in the world and they have to reboot the system because they were so close to the edge so close to the edge and uh, they have to make sure that the system can at least run the benchmark uh, this is crazy that guys these performances could not be achieved just with the regular system you have to push it to the maximum and you have to push that to the extreme limit with extreme cooling called liquid nitrogen here at the Computex in Taipei, Taiwan The Extreme Addict is uh, back in the system, trying to dial in those uh, settings once again. He's uh, running a slightly lower CPU frequency, but it looks like he's trying to try and push that uncore ever so slightly. There is six minutes left in this second semi-final of the HWBot World Series here in Taipei, Taiwan. They are both using the same CPU, the Intel Core i7-6950X. They are using DDR4 Zadak 511 memory. DDR4, of course, the pretty uh, new one. They are using Zadak SSDs as well. The important stuff here is they both use different uh, motherboard. Dancop is using the Intel, uh, the uh, Asus Maximus 5 Extreme uh, Edition 10. And uh, the Extreme Addict is using the X99 SoC Champion from Gigabyte. They are of course all using the Seasonic PSU, the power supply provided by Seasonic, the Platinum P760 100 watt. Yeah, so it's, just, it's quite interesting that I haven't seen any of the uh, overclockers using... Uh, there's a tool that was released to check that make sure that all the CPUs are running at all the cores are running at the same frequency. And I'm quite surprised to see that I haven't seen Extreme Addict or Dancop use that tool to make sure that their CPUs are actually set to the frequency that uh, that they are applying. That's the thing, once you're on stage in this 30 minutes match, especially here on the stage in front of the crowd, maybe sometimes you're so stressed that you know you, you just focus on, oh, why this frequency is not working instead of focusing on the tweak. Usually you want to, you get more point by just increasing the frequency rather than doing the tweaking. The tweaking is to have the last little bit of the, of the, tops, uh, of the top point. So what happens is with the, the software provided, it, it sometimes will only set eight of the 10 cores to the, the frequency. So it, it might not seem like a, a, a tweak or a system um, setting, but if two cores are running at a slow frequency, your score will definitely be affected. Because these benchmarks are testing all the system on the CPU. And you can see now that Extreme Addict is, is running to the max CPU advantage again. We have three minutes and 42 seconds left in this uh, semi-final of the HWBot World Tour 2016 at Computex. The commentary have been provided by Truthman from Overclicking TV and Dr. Wiz, number one overclicker in South Africa, giving you all his insight about this game. So we got Dan Kopp back in the system and uh, he's trying to just dial that CPU in again. 53 multiplier, 100 in base clock frequency, that means 5.3 gigahertz on the CPU. And this is crazy, he's, have, he's having a CPU call voltage of 1.64. This is one of the IOS we saw during the 1 versus 1 match. Yeah, I also find it quite interesting that he's got his DRAMs dialed into 1.9 volts. Uh, in my pre-testing, I didn't find the, the Zedek memory to scale much past 1.8, 1.85. Uh, it could have just been the, the, the kit that I was testing, but it, it clocked very well. So the two overclickers, you can see that Eximatic was trying to do some uh, some tweaking. It didn't work out, so it would just uh, go back to the system and bench once again. And blue screen from Dan Cop. Yeah, it was so close to the edge that the system did not Two manage to... 20 seconds. In so close to the edge that the system did not manage to survive this... Um, this, this workload on the CPU and uh, of course this only happened because they are pushing it to the limit of course if you just plug the CPU when you get it everything will work fine but here they push it so long and so close to the edge that sometimes it just slip off and fall right yeah, that's right and you know th there's so many variables that can come to play here you might be pushing too little v-core too much v-core too little cold too much cold uh, there's this there's, there's 
many variables and the only way to find out where the absolute limit is is to probe and to test and to find it and once you've dialed it in you can really push hard as you can see they're using liquid nitrogen this is super cold um, fluid that is a negative 200 degrees and they use that to cool down the cpu as much as they can yeah so extreme addict is, is running again is into the second uh, cpu test the warm-up phase and we should get a score in about 15 seconds there's only one minute left in this second match of the semi-final we are at the hwbot world tour 2016 this is the competition called the hwbot world series and we have a new score by Danco. Extreme Addict. Yeah, Extreme Addict, sorry. Extreme Addict. 21,100. So that is not better than his previous best. So he will just change some settings and run again. Trying to find the, the magic sweet spot. 30 seconds. There's 30 seconds left. The benchmark have to be run before the end of the timer to uh, be valid. Let's see if uh, the two overclickers will be able to, to do that. Extreme Addict is most likely doing his last run here now. Uh, Dan Cop is maybe just t tuning in the last bits just before the end of the of the timer. That's right. This will be Dan Cop's last attempt and he's got 12 seconds to launch the benchmark. 10 seconds. All right, so Dan Cop has launched the benchmark. Five, he will be able to complete four, this run. Three, two. One thumbs up. So here we go. These are the last run of this second semi-final here at the Asia Bot World Series 26 in Asia. Oh, oh blue, blue screen, screen from Dan Cup and the game is over. The game is over. Uh, Extreme Addict is uh, qualifying for the final here. He just wants to finish the run to uh, to see the score. It maybe he will improve his previous score. Uh, that will still be a good display of uh, skills that he can do just before the end. So two days ago, Dan Cup uh, won against Extreme Addict. And today, this is Extreme Addict winning front of Dan Cup. Okay, uh, so the, the benchmark did complete, but uh, he just needs to click on uh, no in order to get a score. So, so 82499 is not better than his best score, uh, so he will be victorious with his 82589 advantage. So here we are now, we have Extreme Attic accessing the final and he will be facing um, has, uh, Azan, Azan. Azan from Azan. Indonesia. And we will have the bronze final against uh, between Dan Cup and Raccoon, so that would be a, a fully European final for that. That was a very tight game. Uh, we had Extreme Addict pushing very hard since in straight from the beginning, and then we had uh, Dan Cup slightly, you know, taking it, you know, safe up uh, score after score to uh, reach out to the best uh, he, he could. Um, what was your 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 experience of this match, uh, Doctor Wiz, as a number one overclocker in South Africa? Uh, how do you see them behaving on the on the, on the on the stage here? Yeah, look, there was definitely two diff very different approaches taken. Uh, there was the slow and cautious, and then there was the the balls, the walls per se um, approach, which was maximum clocks, maximum score, and get get onto the leaderboard. It, both strategy are, strategies are a bit risky because the the longer you run for, the more unstable your your equipment can get. At the same time, if you just go as hard as possible, you also stand the risk of not actually dialing it incorrectly and then just struggling for the whole 30 minutes. Um, Personally, I think the, the approach with with Vantage uh, physics score was a risky one because there's so many different variables that could give you a boost. And we saw that with Extreme Addict running 125 base clock and Dan Cop running 100 base clock. Something very small like that with the, the wrong memory divider could have been the reason why there was a thousand point difference for the same frequency. And this thousand point difference is what makes the, 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 the what made the difference here today of Extreme Addict going to the final to maybe defend his title for the SWBOT uh, World Championship in December. Uh, this is uh, impressive that Dan Cup won uh, two days ago against XA. That was a tight, uh, that was a tight game, but here today was an extremely tight game as well. Uh, this is the semi-final, and you know it. 
there's so much pressure for the guys. Uh, they actually Dan Cup uh, was competing yesterday in another competition as well. He finished seconds there as well. Uh, you know, this is this is extremely intense for the guys. Uh, anyway, they're still going back home with some cash because anyway they qualified, uh, they did the qualifier run with some cash there. Uh, we will uh, maybe take a short break in the next few minutes to uh, prepare for the next game. The next game will feature the amateur, the amateur overclocker, so people that uh, got straight for 30 minutes. Um, be on the Broadwell eCPUs here and uh, they had 30 minutes to qualify uh, for this. We took the top four of this amateur and uh, they will be now having their first overclocking competition on stage. They won't be using liquid nitrogen uh, yet but they will be using uh, water cooling like all-in-one water cooling and that will be uh, based on XTU and we will be getting the match uh, started in the, in the next 20 minutes. Uh, thank you Dr. Will, thank you very much. Uh, you. Where can the, uh, the guys see you and follow you online? Right, well, you can you can find me on Facebook, uh, com backslash drweez.oc. And then I've also got my Twitch channel, which is twitchtv.drweez underscore oc. Uh, follow me on both. I do stream twice a week normally. And uh, till next time, happy benching. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time Thank here you. and uh, uh, good luck on your streams. Uh, if you guys uh, are new to the to these overclocking things, you can go subscribe to him because he's explaining a lot of things for uh, rookies, the newcomers in this overclocking hobby. So check it out. That's uh, that's awesome. Don't forget that we are having a giveaway on uh, our uh, site. You can find the information about the giveaway right here, right now, and we will start the next game in about 20 minutes. Until next time, keep pushing it. <laughs>